Hello everyone, Mr. John here from Air Team Institute with this week's Thursday tidbit where we're going to be talking about the Chinese remainder theorem. This theorem is inspired by and named after a famous question or lots of arguments about how it was originally asked or things like that. But roughly dating to the 3rd century in a Chinese book, there is a question similar to the one that we have here. So the setup is an army general was counting his soldiers. The total number of soldiers was between 100 and 200. If he let his soldiers stand in rows of three each, two soldiers were left out. So here's where we start to see the number theory, the remainders, and things like that coming in. He changed the row size to five soldiers each. There were still three soldiers left out. If he changed it to seven soldiers per row, there were two soldiers left out. And of course the question is, how many soldiers were there? So this was not really solved in that original formation of the book. There were results like this in Indian mathematics. Later it was solved again in a, another famous Chinese book a little bit later. But the Chinese remainder theorem is the name that stuck to this type of question. Now, let's take a look at this in a more modern formulation of the question. It's the same exact question, but using our modular arithmetic notation. You can check out the link below to our old Thursday tidbit that introduces that a little bit. Remember, if two numbers have the same remainder, so a and b have the same remainder when you divide by m, you write a is equivalent to this three lines b mod m in that case. And then we can translate that original question into modern notation here. We want to find an integer x such that the total number of soldiers was between 100 and 200. So here we have 100 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 200. He let the soldiers stand in rows of three each. There were two soldiers left out. So that gives us that x is equivalent to 2 mod 3. Right? The soldiers are in rows of three each and then 2 is left out. If we do rows of five each, three are left out. So when we divide by five, the remainder is three. And the remainder when we divide by seven is two. This is our modern formulation of this question there. Now, let's just do a quick answer and then check that answer. We'll discuss a little bit later in this video a more uh, systematic way of solving the problem in general. So what is the answer? Right, you can pause here, try to figure it out yourself. The answer is actually going to be 128 soldiers here. Now, let's prove our answer is correct. So we're not going to give the general method for finding it yet, but we can still prove that the answer is the right one here. Is x between 100 and 200? Well, sure, that is a kind of easy portion we can do in this case there. So 128 soldiers is 126 plus 2, and 126 is a multiple of 3. 120 is 40 times 3, so this is 40 time, 42 times 3 plus 2 in this case. Pretty clearly 125 is a multiple of 5, 5 times 25. So if we add 3, we get our 128 there. So those are good in this case too. And of course this is also 128 is 126. Remember we said that was 42 times 3. Well, 42 is a multiple of 7. So this is a multiple of 7 plus 2. And we are good in that scenario there as well. Now, if you're watching this video and haven't seen this before, you're probably a little bit unsatisfied, however. Right? We have a but. Can we always find a solution? When does this work? Are there times it works? Are there times it doesn't work? 
Are there multiple solutions? How can we find the solutions? We didn't really answer any of those questions yet. We're not going to totally answer all of them, and I'll say a little bit more about that when we see the theorem on the next page, the next slide, but we'll explore them over the next little bit of this video as well. Let's take a look then at the actual general theorem or really a special case of the general theorem. So for three equations, this was our setup we had here. The Chinese remainder theorem for these three equations, meaning we have something like x is equivalent to a mod l, b mod m, c mod n. This does work in general. You could have two equations, three equations, four equations, 12 equations, any number of equations there. As long as all of the mods are pairwise relatively prime. So the restriction we have here is that however many mods you have, in this case we have three, L, M, and N, they are pairwise relatively prime. That means they share no common factors, but it has to be piece by piece. And when we look at the method for solving this, you'll see why it really matters that we're thinking about two of them at a time. So L and M can't share any factors, M and N can't share any factors, L and N can't share any factors there. So then there exists a unique solution. The conclusion of this theorem is there's a unique solution modulo L times M times N. Another way of thinking about this, I'll say a little bit more about that later on, this is the GCD of L, M, and N because they're all relatively prime anyway. But I want to just point that out as a way of thinking about it there. And that should be somewhat obvious. If we're talking about a remainder of something when we divide by 2, of something when we divide by 3, well, that pattern is going to repeat every six numbers. If you have a number, right, with remainder 1 when you divide by 2 and remainder 2 when you divide by 3, if you find one number, of course, adding 6 to it, which is divisible by 2 and 3, is not going to change things. So we don't have total uniqueness, but we have uniqueness in the mod sense. There's a unique remainder when you divide by L times M times N. But that also gives you all of the solutions. If you add a multiple of that, you get another solution. So you continue to find infinitely many solutions there. That's why in our question, when we wanted to find between 100 and 200, you'll see when we do this on the next slide, how that infinite number of solutions then can turn into a specific one that fits the extra restriction of our problem there. I will say more about this later, but the Chinese remainder theorem does not tell us when there are not solutions. This is an existence theorem. It tells us in these scenarios, you're guaranteed to have a solution. If these scenarios aren't met, if these restrictions aren't met, maybe you have a solution, maybe you don't. And we'll see an example of that quick at the end, just to show off how that might work a little bit there. Now, let's go back to our original question. We're looking for an x that is 2 mod 3, 3 mod 5, 2 mod 7. There's lots of different tricks to do to solve these questions. If you do a lot of these questions, you can look at different methods and look at systematic ways of doing it that might work in specific areas. There's some nice tricks to solve, for example, portions of this question. But I just want to look at a basic way, a standard way that just will work in general and really gives you partially the idea of how you find this or the patterns you could start looking for. Let's start with our first scenario here. So x is equivalent to 2 mod 3. 
we have x is equivalent to 2 mod 3, so this is basically telling us that x is 3 times k for some integer k in this case. Now, rather than doing it algebraically, I just want to show you can just look for patterns. Start looking for examples and things like that there. So we have 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, etc. there. Now I actually don't need all of these because really if you're doing this, along the way, what you want to look for is do any of our numbers also satisfy the second equation? Do any of these numbers have a remainder of 3 when we divide by 5? Now 3 when we divide by 5 is pretty nice because that means the units digit has to be 3 or 8. Well, wait a second. We have an 8 here as well. So 8 satisfies the first two equations here. Now if we think about the Chinese remainder theorem, what would it say for two equations? That would just say, okay, we found a unique solution, and that's unique mod 3 times 5. So that's 3 times 5 is 15 in this case. So something like x equals 8 plus 15 times another integer l, this will work for the first two. So let me draw an arrow there. So it works for the second equation and it works for the first equation there. So this works for the first two equations there. Now, you probably are seeing what we're going to do next. So we look at examples of these. So we have 8 we have then 23 plus 15 plus 15. We have 38 dot 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 there. Because if you're following along, you're probably already yelling at me. Because we have now already found one that works with the third equation. So really when we're listing out 8, is 8 2 mod 7? No. Okay, move on. Add 15. 23. Is 23 2 mod 7? Well, it's 21 plus 2, so yes. Actually, 23 works in this scenario. So this tells us that our final answer, and actually all of the answers, are going to be, and let me write this in two ways here. The first way we could think about it with our integer things, it's 23 plus 3 times 5 times 7, that is 105. So it's 105 times n for integer n's. Or another way of just thinking about this, of course, is we could just write the answer as a mod itself. So x has to be equivalent to 23 mod 105. So that would be another way of writing this answer there. Notice we're a little bit ignoring the 100 to 200 portion here. The general number theory question, right, is just with these mods. And if we're framing it like mods, we can give our final answer in terms of mods. But where does 128 come from? Well, 23 is not in the correct range, so add 105. 23 plus 105 is 128, and that is the answer that we were looking for in the original question. In the original word problem, we wanted 128 soldiers in that case. Now, as I mentioned, what happens if we are in a situation where the Chinese remainder theorem does not apply? Let's look at that in two examples here. Our first of these is, let's look at mod 6 and mod 9. Just to review what goes wrong here, of course the GCD of 6, or sorry, of 9 and 12, remember we look at the mods, the GCD of these things is 3. Just to hammer home the idea too, this means their LCM is not their product, their LCM is not the 9 times 12, which is 108. 
their LCM is actually smaller than that here. Their LCM is actually 36 in this scenario. So this is where some things are definitely going to be different for the problem in this scenario. Now, we can still try to use our same method that we have from before. We have here then, okay, let's look at 6 mod 9. So this could be the number x, our candidates are, well, we could have 6. We could add, um, well, actually, let's do a little bit of a time saver here. Let's actually look at the second equation. And some of you might have been yelling at me before to do this. What is the advantage of looking at this second equation first? Well, it's going to just go a little bit quicker because we have bigger numbers we're adding. Then we have 9, we add 12, we're going to get 21. Does that work? Are either of those 6 mod 9? No. Well, what if we add 12 again? We get 33. Is 33 6 mod 9? Well, it's 27 plus 6. Actually, it does work in that case. Of course, if you did it in reverse, the same thing could work. 9, 15, 21, 27, 33. You would get to 33. But notice you would use almost double the numbers in that case. Sorry, you would go 9, 18, 27 um, in that scenario. 6, 15, 24, 33. So things are a little bit different there, but you would get there eventually too. But in general, a good practice is starting with the bigger number and going from there. Now, we found this 33 that works. Because the numbers are not relatively prime, I also want to caution us that our pattern is a little bit different here as well. Because if we continued this pattern, let me actually just go on a couple more terms in this case, dividing or adding 12 each time and checking what works there. So we add 12, we get 45, that does not work. We add 12, we get 57, that does not work. We add 12 again, we get 69. Notice that one does work there. So it repeats every three terms, which shouldn't surprise us because this is 36 more than the original. I just wanted to look at this example here to say our general answer then is, well, x is equivalent to 33, but now we have to work mod 36. It's not the product, it's mod 36, which is their LCM in this case. So here is where things are a little bit different there. The Chinese remainder theorem did not apply. We were not guaranteed a solution by the Chinese remainder theorem, but it still worked. That, however, is not always the case. So let's end with one final example, still mod 9 and mod 12. But let's look at one here that actually doesn't work in this case. Let's do our same strategy as the previous one. Let's look at 8 mod 12 here. And let's look at our numbers then. So our candidates for x, well, we could have 8, we could have 20, we could have 32. We're adding 12 each time, right? 44, 56, and let's squeeze in one more here, 68 in this case as well. Now, I'll let you check that none of these work. And the way I want to look at this, or the way I want to convince you of that, is let's look mod 9. So what are these numbers if we take the remainder when we divide by 9? So we want to look at all of these numbers and look at their remainder when we divide by 9 in this case and see what's going on. Remember, we always want to look for patterns for these things. So 8, of course, just becomes 8. 20 becomes 18 plus 2, so we have 2. 27 plus 5, so we have 5. When we get to 44, here's where something interesting happens. 
This is 36 plus 8. We go back to 8 here. 56 is going to be 54 plus 2. We have 2 again. 68 is going to be 5 again. So this pattern repeats. It's going to be 8 to 5, 8 to 5 over and over and over. So this pattern repeats. And what is missing from the pattern? 6. There's no remainder of 6 when we divide by 9 there. So this tells us that we have no solution here. There are no x that work in this case. So it's the same mods, 9 and 12, but here the answer does not exist. There's no solution, there's no x that fits these two criteria there. So you need to be careful, you need to think more, work with the numbers and work with the mods and really look at what's happening when you have numbers that are not relatively prime in this case. If they're relatively prime, Chinese remainder theorem says it's guaranteed to work. Otherwise, Chinese remainder theorem says nothing. You don't know one way or the other whether it will work or not. That is it for our video today. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked this video, it really helps to like and subscribe below so you keep getting the Thursday tidbits and check back each week. If you want some more practice, check out the Zoom International Math League. We have a lot of great resources available for you as well on that site and as part of that community. Thank you all for watching. Goodbye.